Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back. So let's start. We were talking about the uh, business cycle, and I would say in the in the classical context, and we try to understand that how we can think about the real business cycle model. And under that, we were discussing about the Keynesian perspective. So as I mentioned, that during 1960s, 70s, 80s, when people started accepting the idea of the neoclassical about how we can think about or we can understand the business cycle dynamics with the help of the behavior of consumer firm market government we can think about introducing or making the um, uh, making the efficient allocation in the economy with regard to the output and employment so here this has to deal more with the business cycle dynamics now we are uh, we were di discussing in the last session about the coordinate uh, the strategic complementarity model and under that we understood that how we can think about an economy which will have different set of rules and regulations to understand. Now here what we were talking about is the Keynesian coordination failure models in the last class I had given you the or in the last session I had given you the brief background and we were discussing to some extent the complementarities. So, in the economy when we say about the strategy complementarity then it implies that it the, the firms are also having incentives and they also look out for other firms that what they are doing and it all in which all activities they are participating. If they, they think that whatever the firm is producing and if it is going to be sold immediately to the next firm or the activi activities of one firm. Uh, uh, depend upon the activities of, of some, some other firms in the economy, which is very normal case. In the last session, I had also given the example of, of uh, uh, some kind of picnic trip where you think that if some people are organizing and if everyone is going, then you also feel to participate. If no one is participating, then you also avoid. So, in most of the economies that is the scenario we have that when we are discussing about the complementarities when we talk about the complementarities we try to see uh, some kind of uh, interdependence that how in the economy one firm depends upon another. For example, a firm may be selling uh, uh, for example, a software company uh, or the outlook of software company will depend upon how is the outlook of the hardware company. So, if the hardware suppliers are more and if they have a good business then it is obvious that the software supplier will also have a good amount of sale and as a result this particular form will also survive and it will have profitability. But here it all depends upon the expectation and once I talk about expectation which is unobservable. So, in the economy when you have a large set of individuals participating in different types of activities then it is obvious that you will not have homogeneous expectation. The expectation will vary. So, some of the agents may be expecting or have a very higher expectation about the economy a business cycle some individuals may not be having that kind of outlook. So, depending upon what the individuals uh, what the individual is considering in its expectation or her or in, he, in his or her expectation that matters a lot that if the if the individuals are not just thinking about how they can think about making the expectation. So, maybe it is adaptive, maybe it is rational when they are incorporating all set of information. So, some individuals may be more bullish about the outlook of the economy whereas, some other individuals may not be. So, here you have two types of variables to understand one is the optimistic scenario that individuals are very optimistic and one you have the pessimistic scenario 
where individuals are not pa pessimistic about certain outcomes and they feel that the economy or the outlook may not be better. So, there with regard to interdependence, they have a low expectation. Those who are optimistic with regard to interdependence, complementarity, they have higher expectation. So, this creates a scenario that in the economy, if I am assuming to have only two equilibria, where we have a where we have the optimistic and you are there you have the pessimistic. If you have two equilibria, then it is easier to understand, but it, it can happen that in the economy you may have multiple equilibria that people may have a slightly better uh, uh, better expectation. Some people may have perfect foresight kind of understanding. Some individuals may have no understanding at all. So, those individuals have tried to incorporate. So, in the economy it is not just mix of uh, individuals, it also talks about certain macroeconomic dynamics. So, Keynesian coordination failure model, it helps in that. So, uh, so here the idea is that unlike the real business cycle model where prices and wages were flexible and with that we try to understand that how we can think about the aggregation of output, how certain uh, policy variables like for example, monetary policy, how in assuming the neutrality condition, how it uh, makes all other variables as pro-cyclical in the business cycle understanding. Here, since it is Keynesian model, so ultimately the objective will be that how with the interference of the government, we are making the business cycle understanding better and most, more and more variables are making as pro-cyclical. So, the idea is very good and it is having lot of applications and you can uh, uh, you, you can apply such models in, in your understanding about the economy and macroeconomic aspect. So, in some cases this particular model uh, uh, may not be directly applicable. So, then after this we will be talking about the new Keynesian. So, there you will have the this is also coming from the salt water and there you will have the salt water understanding in a much better way. So, here the basic assumption is that in the economy firms are operating and unlike the uh, constant uh, constant on to a scale where here here you have uh, the the increasing returns to a scale. It means that your output incre increases by, uh, by uh, if you are doubling the input your output increases by more than double. So, if it is uh, I am saying. So, here it makes also the increasing return to scale has certain characteristics that if you are talking about the scenarios where you have a very efficient technology and this efficient technology is making you produce more and more output in the same way that we saw in case of real business cycle that productivity shock created a very favorable scenario for most of the macroeconomic variable. Just to complement that, the Keynesian also introduced some kind of boosting factor into their model and this increasing, increasing returns to a scale acts as a boosting factor that this augments the rest of the variable. So, this assumption is very stringent assumption and one of the criticism of the model is also the increasing returns to a scale, which is very uh, rare to find in most of the economies. Maybe certain industries will have such type of production behavior, maybe in case of services industry in terms of earning that if you are if you are having four individuals uh, producing a software and that software is having higher value, but, but it also depends that uh, how much uh, how wide is the application of that software. So, if more and more individuals are adding the dimension of how wide is the application of software, then of course, the demand is going to boost. So, that kind of scenario or that kind of demand based production process may be a good example here. So, here uh, in most of the cases what we saw that the demand for labor normally in case of when we talk about demand, it it is supposed to be the downward kind of behavior, but here when we say about the labor demand, it, it has the upward slope because of the increasing returns and in most of the cases since it is about the increasing returns, which means that labor is also in a big demand uh, and most of the firms do not try in hiring this amount of labor. So, the slope of this will be greater than the slope of the 
labor supply so this will be above this so this will be more restricted or or and compared to the to the labor supply which which uh, depends upon the rate of interest again that how is the rate of interest scenario so increasing returns to a scale i would say it imposes certain kind of conditions which may not be easy to digest and that's what these are the important limitations of this particular model but let's work out with certain kind of dynamics for example we can think about output supply we can think about the multiple equilibria so those things we will be discussing so output supply so here what we are seeing is that here we have the r1 and with r1 so here you have the y and r so this axis you have the rate of interest which is a real rate of interest where we have inflation as, as zero so we are having both nominal and real equal coming from the previous to previous when we are talking about the monetary intertemporal model the fisherian framework so here we have and here we on the x axis it is the y to y1 right and once we have y to y1 then uh, this shows the output now here we have the production function and as you can see when we are assuming the increasing returns to a scale then we here we have the output n1 and demand and supply of labor here you have n1 here so which means that the rate of interest r1 it corresponds to n1 y1 and then n1 and here you can think about the w1 but suppose you have the scenarios in which you have the rate of interest higher so if, if the rate of interest is higher then this creates troubles in the uh, this uh, this is having uh, some kind of impact direct impact on the labor supply so what happens that in this particular situation when you have the rate of interest higher right maybe the money supply increased so if the rate or you you can think about a scenario in which the the rate of interest is is higher so maybe the the situation in which we are incurring a some kind of equilibrium model where we are superimposing this condition that in case if the rate of interest is higher then this is immediately having impact on the employment output so here will be employment lower and output will also be lower but here we have the n2 and n2 what it implies that because of this rate of interest higher the 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 representative consumer will be now more looking for substitution effect kind of scenario when your earnings are higher you will substitute of uh, 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 or or i would say you will substitute more of a uh, or you will go for substituting current uh, leisure or future leisure for current leisure when you have the rate of interest higher so such kind of substitution what will immediately uh, it will happen that here you have the labor supply going down and as, as a result you arrive at the equilibrium here right it will shift towards a right so now individuals will be looking for a, a higher reward so that makes the the situation much in uh, at point n2 once i reach at point n2 then what i find that because of this interest scenario that we have and this output supply uh, let's first discuss what is output supply output supply is the level of equilibrium of the the uh, or i would say equilibrium at which the the rate of interest or it shows the relationship between rate of interest and the output at which the labor market clears the moment i say the output supply curve then this is what we have to assume so with the rate of interest and the output scenarios we try to understand the equilibrium in the labor market and labor market equilibrium will always be with regard to the substitution and income effect because then whenever you have the rate of interest higher you think that the 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 labor will expect that since the reward is going to be higher in future right so it's better that they will substitute uh, for more uh, more i would say leisure so this this is how it works and as a result your employment is going to be lower because people will be now substituting for this higher interest rate scenario creates an opportunity and as a result what we see is that demand for labor that we have uh, it is uh, it is also having a lower scenario and this is how it works 
So, higher interest rate scenarios are not very uh, good for the economy and this ultimately reduces the employment, reduces the output and also the it also hinders the demand supply scenarios in the labor market. So, this is what we have to understand. Here we have to understand the output supply curve as I mentioned it uh, that in the framework of interest rate and output it shows that how the labor market reacts. So, this is how they try and understand. Now, here we are talking about the multiple equilibria. Now, as I mentioned in the beginning that when we have the multiple equilibria, then we can think about the scenario in which we have a half of the individuals as an optimistic and half individuals as a uh, pessimistic, but it can happen that there will be a multiple equilibria. So, here you have a further degrees of optimism and further degrees of pessimism that you can decide about. So, what typically happens is uh, what typically happens is that here you have a W1 N1 and here you have W2 N2. Corresponding to this W1 N1, so this is the labor market we have and this is the, the this is the scenario in which we are talking about the, the output uh, sorry output and the rate of interest. So, here we have a Ys and here so here we have a Ys and here we have the Y D. So, output demand and output supply right. Now, you can think about this situation as the pessimistic scenarios where the rate of interest is higher and output is lower. Optimistic scenario corresponds to this R 2 and Y 2. So, which means that at the lower rate of interest your output is higher. Now, with this particular uh, here when we talk about the money supply then here we money supply is fixed at this price you can think about the uh, when we have uh, such type of scenario corresponding to r1 right so at this uh, rate of interest whenever we see so at r2 the rate of interest is lower so here again you have the 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 money demand changing quite aggressively and this leads to what we have the rightward shift right of the money demand and this leads to a lower price level. So, this is how it implies, but what what is important to understand is that in the low equilibria scenario, one of the regions could be that because of this particular change that you have here that I mentioned about that uh, in the pessimistic scenario, it may also happen that because of the, the certain pessimistic expectations the participation of labor in the economy is much lower because they have very limited lower expectations. So, they do not supply that much amount of labor right. So, they will be having uh, some kind of understanding that anyway the wage is not going to increase. So, let us not supply that much amount of labor, let us work for le lesser number of hours and this will create further trouble in the economy. Whereas, in the in the optimistic scenario this is quite opposite that individuals are having higher expectation that the future outlook is going to be better, they will have higher increase in the wage rate because productivity has increased and this productivity increase will have further increase in their current and future income and they can think about a higher level of consumption in both periods and you can directly link this particular scenario with what we have discussed in the intertemporal framework. So, in case optimistic scenario it becomes easier to understand that how the individuals are reacting to different set of or to, to different sets of the expectation with regard to the future earnings, future livelihood, future consumption, current consumption. So, here is the best scenario. So, here it becomes more or less uh, augmenting scenarios for the economy. Since the rate of interest is lower, so you can think about the money supply increase and this money supply increase has resulted in the lower rate of interest and this has created a better favorable scenario for investment and all others even consumption. right? And since we have the money demand change and this change is leading to price decline, so this is also good. So, in case of optimistic means good scenarios, what are the situations? The employment increasing, wage rate is increasing, you have the lower interest rate, output is increasing and also the money demand is also changing right? and price is getting lower. So, which means that we are able to understand the business cycle in a much better way under this 
good equilibria whereas bad equilibria is a scenario where this has to be ruled out. So, in this situation it becomes important to think about the coordination failure. So, what we uh, had under uh, what we had understood in the case of a real business cycle model is that we talked about the consumption which is the pro cyclical investment pro cyclical employment pro cyclical real wage pro cyclical average labor productivity also becomes pro cyclical. So, Keynesians almost countered the idea of the classicals when they mentioned about the real business cycle model that how when they were emphasizing more on productivity shock which is also some kind of increasing return to a scale that the Keynesians introduced later. So, once I have the productivity increase then this is also creating a favorable scenario to understand the business cycle. Keynesians also countered that uh, that debate and then they started this coordination failure model and they also proved that it also has the same kind of implications on business cycle that we have for the neo classicals. So, I hope it is clear that how the classical idea and Keynesian ideas are responding to each other and how these two ideas are really really useful. So, you can think in that direction. So, here we have the pro cyclical money supply in the coordination failure model. When we have money supply increase what it leads to the money demand uh, scenario changes and as a result what we see is the price decrease. So, here we have money supply increase m 1 to in m 2 and this leads to what we have the the price getting lower and what the uh, the the coordination failure model suggests. Uh, so, here we have so let me first uh, give you some idea about that individuals in the economy. Uh, so, here the idea is that when will be the situation when we are able to wipe out this w 1 n 1 and here we have r 1 y 1 and here we have p 1 scenarios that when we are able to make this particular context relevant. So, when will be the situation? So, if your economy is doing really good all the all the sectors are doing really well then in that situation it becomes really important. Now, many business cycle theorists link this particular phenomena with regard to what they call it the the sun spot theory. In case of sun spot the idea is that there will be some uh, some leading factors in the economy that will further uh, further boost the the optimism scenarios and this creates a. Uh, so, the number of pessimists which are there in the economy and if you have a more sun spots in the economy then the number of pessimists falling in that direction will reduce and as a result your economy moves in the upward direction and most of the variables react in a pro cyclical manner. So, sun spot is the major and even the Keynes suggested that you have animal spirits kind of situation where we think about uh, Alan I would say Greenspan mentioned about the the irrational exuberance or, or and also uh, he had mentioned about uh, uh, a term which is linked with what we uh, call it the if you think about the variable then he had recommended that a stock market can act as a sun spot because it is having some kind of forward looking scenario. So, the the bad equilibria and, and the good equilibria that we have in the economy with regard to the pessimist and optimist. Uh, so, good, good equilibria and bad equilibria. So, good equilibria is linked with the optimistic scenario, bad equilibria linked with the pessimistic scenario. These two scenarios are having good and bad. So, the frequency occurrence of good and good will create always a better scenario. The frequency occurrence of bad and bad will always be having the recessionary scenarios. So, from the business cycle language this is how it works. So, this is how we try and understand here. So, pro cyclical money supply in the coordination value model. So, this is how it looks like that in most of the cases price is going to be down and this is coming from here nothing much to change only thing is that you have money supply increase. And why it is happening because the role of the central bank is that you have to uh, at least uh, control the uh, control the uh, the inflation and if the central government is not reacting then that matters a lot. 
So, if the if money supply increase rate of interest is going to be uh, lower and then you have the money demand changing and this creates further scenarios for the labor to react accordingly in the labor market and this further creates the coordination failure problem. Now, here stabilization of fiscal policy in the coordination failure model. So, here what they say about the money supply in the coordination failure model that unlike the neutrality condition that we superimpose in case of real business cycle, here they do not follow in most of the, the in most of the Keynesian economics what they say that the money supply is uh, money is non-neutral in short run, in the long run it becomes neutral. So, that argument they further carry forward. So, here what is the idea behind? Idea behind is that if suppose you have the, so here you have the uh, Y 1 D. So, here you have the output demand and here you have the output supply. Here you have, uh, here you can think about the the bad and here you have the good and this is the ideal situation. In ideal situation what how this is created? This ideal situation is created when you have uh, some kind of taxation or government comes into picture and government cuts the expenditure. If government is going to cut the expenditure then individuals will also be reacting in the same way. So, their present value of of current tax will be uh, much uh, lower than this this makes the the understanding easier that people will react in a so consumption and all other variables will react and ultimately there will be some kind of convergence this is what I said that you have to remove the pessimistic scenarios move towards the optimistic and this is how it looks like that because of the labor market adjustment you have the Y 2 S now touching upon the. So, once I have the the Y 1 D here. So, because of this the government expenditure or some kind of, of positive uh, sentiment given to the households or individuals this leads to what we have the the output almost having the parallel line and, and it is shifting down and this shifting down when it is it is a tangent to Y 2 S which is Y 1 S and Y 2 S here then this is having R star and Y star and this R star and Y star uh, gives us the scenario that the op pessimist and optimist scenario can have the uh, a middle uh, path and this is how it shows. So, in case of fiscal policy what typically happens is that when when you have the when you have the rate of interest higher at this level individuals will be of course, thinking about uh, how the current will be thinking about current and future leisure right which one will be higher and lower. Here at this point the individuals are more comfortable right. So, they have lower interest rate and higher output, but because of these two scenario extreme scenarios the individuals may also be thinking that let us not uh, go for that kind of uh, work that they used to do earlier. So, as a result you have the parallel shifting down and this is how it works here. There are certain limitations that we normally encounter in case of coordination failure model that the assumption of increasing returns to a scale makes the model difficult to understand in the real life scenarios. Second thing is about the expectations that when we have we are when you are superimposing expectations uh, with regard to certain macroeconomic scenarios, business cycle scenarios, then it, it becomes really difficult to understand that how it works your expectations are unobservable. So, I think all these two uh, uh, limitations we have already highlighted. So, I am stopping it here. I hope you have uh, been able to understand uh, the perspective that how we can think about a scenario where even if you have a Keynesian perspective under flexible and I would say prices right. So, neoclassical this is what they try to explain uh, from both Keynesian and classical perspective that how we can understand the business cycle and since in the Keynesian role of the government becomes important. So, they introduce the government also, but unlike the real business cycle here we are saying that the money supply is not uh, neutral and the government uh, policy becomes really important to bring stabilization in the economy. So, I am stopping it here. Thank you. Thank you so much.